In the last video, we made this simple four-way rig to choose one of four mouths to apply to our 2D character. In this video, we're gonna make this rig that's going to select which eyes the 2D character gets. All right, let's start with the 2D default blend and save this as TJ eyes. Okay, import the eye textures. So import images as planes. In TJ textures, we have the eye PNG and the eye guide. Don't forget to check use alpha on the bottom left. You may have to scroll around or resize this to find it, but make sure that you check use alpha. RX90 to rotate them by 90 degrees. And let's apply the rotation. This plane on the left with the transparent background is going to be the actual eyes that we paste onto the character. The plane on the right is going to be a guide for the selector that we use to choose which pair of eyes get pasted onto the character. So this plane has six pairs of eyes on it. We need to scale it so that it's the size of just one pair of eyes. Um, let's select the guide and Alt G will move the guide to the center point. So now let's move the guide back a little bit. So here's the actual eyes. We want to move the guide back on the Y axis just a little bit. Okay, and then the eyes, Alt G. All right, let's scale on the X axis until it's about the size of one pair of eyes. And let's press N to bring up this little sidebar that shows you the properties. So now you can see the scale on the X axis or scale of X is now 0.202. It probably should just be 0.2. And now we want to apply the scale of this plane. So control A, apply scale. So now you can see the plane that has the eyes is a scale of one to one to one. But the uh, image is all squished. Let's go into the UV image editor. To isolate an object, you can press the, what is that, forward slash on the numpad. So now we have just the eyes. All right, hit tab to go into edit mode and U to unwrap. Um, on the left-hand window, select Eyes PNG. Ooh, it's really big, okay. Uh, I'm gonna hide this side thing. So now that we unwrapped, so on the right-hand side is the actual plane, and on the left-hand side is the UV uh, editor. So now that we unwrapped it, uh, we have just one set of eyes. I'm gonna bring this, so I'm gonna hit G and X, and I'm gonna bring this square over so that it is at the center pair of eyes. And tab to go back into object mode. Let's go back to default view with the eyes still selected. Um, in Properties, under Modifiers, add a UV Warp Modifier. So now that we have scaled and unwrapped and altered the UV texture for the object, we're going to use the UV Warp Modifier to move the UV texture. It's gonna, we're going to use it to move the texture around to show the hidden sets of eyes. Um, it does that by calculating the distance from one object to another. 
In the last video, we made a similar rig. So I'm going to import the two objects that were used in that file. Click File, Append. And the last one, we made a mouth rig. So it was entitled TJ Mouth Blend. So I'm going to click on TJ Mouth. And um, let's see, TJ Mouth Object selector and selector base. Now that we have the selector and the selector base, we're going to tell the UV warp modifier to go from the selector base to the selector. We need to resize the selector a little bit so that it outlines the eyes. Go into edit mode by pressing tab Oops, all right, select the selector. Go into edit mode. And let's see, let's just make this, make this kind of outline. Okay, and now let's see, it looks like the origin isn't exactly centered. So let's see. Let's go search, set origin, and then origin to geometry. Alt G just to make sure that's centered. All right, now let's select our eyes and get that out of the way. Oops. So we want to get these. There we go. We want to get that out of the way. Bring this down. Um, let's move the eye guide back by pressing G and Y. So just bring it back just a little bit. Now, when I move the selector, it changes the eyes. Oops, and it looks like we still had a constraint on the selector. So let's go to constraints. Let's just delete that for now. Okay, so now when we move this selector, I'm pressing G and X, it's going way too fast. Um, the reason it's going so fast is because what the UV warp modifier does by calculating these two differences, it's, it's based on one blender unit. So since this guide is, its dimensions are 10, its X dimension is 10 blender units. So it's going 10 times too fast. So instead of X being 10, we want X to be one. Uh, but now it's too tall. So instead of Z, which is up and down being one, we want to make that, I think it's point 0.1 or point. Okay, so point 0.1, which makes it really tiny. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so now take the selector into edit mode and scale it down until it's the size of the eyes. There we go. Okay, so I just had to, while you're doing this, make sure you keep pressing Alt-G just so everything is centered. And you know what, with the selector, okay, the selector keeps getting hidden, so I'm going to go into edit mode and bring it forward on the Y axis just a little bit. So G, Y, and then just drag it up a little bit. Now doing this in edit mode will leave the origin in the center, but it'll bring the mesh forward so that you can see it. All right, now this is really tiny, but let's just double check. Um, we got to find the eyes. So let's just bring the eyes down a little bit that we can see it. All right, so now this is really tiny. We're gonna fix that in a second. So GX, and now the selector will line up with the six different sets of eyes. And if you wanna get really sneaky, you could, well, I guess that one wouldn't work, but you could pick two different sets of eyes. Cool, okay. All right, so over here in the outliner, 
um, the selector base is already invisible and unselectable. Uh, so we need to do the eyes guide. The eyes guide, click on the arrow, and that's going to make it so that you can't select the eye, the guide. You can only select the selector. And now I want to put a constraint on the selector so that it can't go like off of the guide. I want it to stay on the guide. Under constraints, add a limit location. Change that to local space. Z is going to be zero. Y is going to be zero. The only way we want to move this is along the X axis. So what I'm going to do is grab this selector and I'm going to move it just outside of the guide and hit minimum X. So that since minimum X is zero, that brings it right back to zero. So it looks like negative four will be the max or the minimum amount we want to drag it. And then, so let's see, same thing, dragging it to the right, maximum. So minimum negative four, maximum 0.4. So now when I grab this selector, it stays on the guide and it can't go anywhere else. Since we're using a constraint and a modifier that's going to calculate the difference between the selector and the selector base, we don't want to move anything in this rig directly. Uh, so it needs to be parented to something. Let's create a handle that can be used to move and scale the rig. And it's also going to be a label. Uh, add a text. RX90 again. And let's scale this down. Tab to go into text edit mode. And let's just name it eyes. Um, I'm going to scale it down a little more. Convert this from a text to a mesh. Spacebar search convert to mesh from curve. All right, so now that's an object instead of a curve. Um, let's give it a new material and make it green. Also in its uh, object properties, we're going to make the object color green as well. Let's just take a look to make sure. Okay, so we need to bring this forward so that it's on the same. That's close enough. All right. Now we're going to parent everything in the rig to this label. So in the outliner, let's just make everything in the rig selectable and visible. Uh, I'm going to hit A a couple times to make sure that nothing is selected. B to box select. And then shift click eyes. Control P parent to object. Now, if we want to move this, we just will move it with the label. And next, we want to make this into a group. The group will allow us to easily import this rig into another file. So let's go, oh, and let's rename this. So text, let's rename that TJI rig. All right, open that up. and select each thing in the rig and add it to the group. I already named the group TJI group. So selector, selector base, eyes, and, okay, so just double check that everything's in the same group. And now let's hide the selector base and make it unselectable. Also, let's make the eye guide unselectable. All right, so now we can move this guide out 
up over here out of the screen. Scale, oops, scale it so it's a little bit bigger. And let's move this over here. So now the eye plane can go on the character and we can slide this around to change which eyes he has. Let's save this as TJ eyes. Okay, I'm just gonna save this one more time just to be sure. Save as TJ eyes. All right, and in our last video, we left off at TJ4. So we're gonna append this eye rig into TJ4. So file open TJ4. File, append, navigate to TJ eyes, group, TJ I group. And now the eye rig is appended to the file. Let's see, so let's line these eyes up with the head. Okay. Now we can use this selector to choose between the six different sets of eyes for our character. All right, so lastly, Let's parent the eyes to the head, control P. Now we can move the head around. Oh, oops, I forgot to parent the mouth last time. So let's parent the mouth to the head also. Now I can move the head around. You can move the body, change the mouth with this. and change the eyes with this. Whoa, hold on. Okay, so this is backwards. When I go to the left, it actually selects the eyes on the right. Uh, oops, okay, so the way to fix that, select the eyes, um, go to the modifiers, UV warp modifier, and we just need to flip the from and the to. So let's make this selector 001, and change this to selector base. Now, okay, now it's going in the right direction. Awesome. So in the next video, I'm gonna show how to animate the changing of the eyes and the mouth.